Hi, I'm Chris Bean, Chief of the Hemostasis Laboratory Branch. I hope this video will give you a bit of an idea of what our part is in protecting people and preventing complications of blood disorders. One of the sayings in our center is, we are small but mighty, and I think this especially applies to our branch. Our goals and activities fall into three broad categories. One, we perform testing to identify new biomarkers of risk for adverse outcomes in people with blood disorders. Biomarkers are evidence of a disease, infection, or exposure. Two, we also perform testing for surveillance for our Community Counts Registry. This involves testing blood samples of registry participants for viruses such as hepatitis, an inhibitor or antibody to treatment product, or both. And three, we also perform research and testing activities to try and improve testing, either developing new tests or making tests better. Like most laboratories, our lab is organized into a series of different procedure rooms where different activities happen. We'll start at the first room, where we do a lot of surveillance testing for inhibitors. Inhibitors are a response from the body's immune system that renders bleeding treatments partially or completely ineffective at times. This lab is where we do the chromogenic and Nijmegen Bethesda testing, two ways which we can detect inhibitors. This is high throughput testing. Using robotics, we can complete hundreds of tests each week. For community counts, we are performing inhibitor testing on blood samples from up to 5,000 patients each year. In the flea lab, we do surveillance testing as well as research using a third type of test called the flea, or fluorescence immunoassay. Flea is the method CDC's Brian Boylan developed and is a good example of how we work in the lab to improve testing. We use the flea to help rule out false positives in the surveillance testing. Dozens of freezers store blood samples and reagents and are monitored all the time to make sure that they stay at the proper temperature. A reagent is a chemical mixture used to trigger a reaction that we can observe and measure. In this room, viral testing is performed for Community Counts Program for Surveillance. We look for antibodies against HIV and hepatitis C using robotics to rapidly process a high volume of tests. Currently, we run more than 7,000 viral tests uh, each year. We use both traditional old school and newer cutting edge technologies. We run gel tests on traditional equipment. We use gels for separating DNA when doing inversion testing, a test to look for the common inversions or changes in the gene that are a common cause of hemophilia. The 3730 analyzer is used to sequence DNA. It's considered the gold standard for medium to high throughput genetic analysis. It's much faster than what we used to do when we had to read bands on a sequencing gel by hand one at a time. We've improved our lab testing efficiency by using the MySeq, improving our efficiency in the lab by increasing the amount of sequencing performed. We've developed a next generation sequencing panel where we can sequence all of the factor eight genes for 40 to 90 people all in one sequencing run, saving time and money. This method increased the number of samples tested per week by more than 20 times, while reducing the cost by 10 times. The mass array system can run multiple tests simultaneously on large numbers of samples efficiently. This system is used when you're looking for biomarkers of risk. In collaboration with the Division of Birth Defects and Infant Disorders, we recently completed a study looking at a number of genetic markers in the folate metabolism pathway in thousands of samples. This adds a genetic component to the nationally representative data, improving our ability to monitor the U.S. folic acid fortification program, as well as conduct research to investigate the causal relationship between risk factors for anemia and lack of folic acid in the blood. These are just some of the ways that the hemostasis lab helps CDC protect the nation's health.